Will there be a debate? So many of you have been asking me this question and you write in about it. I think the answer is going to be yes. Especially now the Democrats have been losing ground. Biden looks like he's shaky in the polls. I mean, he's always shaky, but shaky in the polls in particular. So I think you are going to see uh, I think you are going to see a debate. But they're certainly opening the door to no debates. They're certainly doing what they can to uh, have it at least be an option for Biden to say, I'm not going to do a debate. I don't feel like it this time. I'm not going to do it. You know, he doesn't, you know, he hasn't earned my respect, Trump. He's a bad man. I need a nap. That's what we think is at least possible. Pelosi. Oh, and, and, and wasn't it a, a conspiracy theory that they were even going to talk about this? What, wasn't that what we were told? That anyone who even raised the possibility, raised the possibility of this, um, was, well, making it up. It was a conspiracy. And then Pelosi actually says, Actually, get over that. And she wakes, she wakes up. She's had uh, about five too many Pinot Grigios probably the night before. But she wakes up and says, yes, 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 Master Legislator Pelosi. Uh, she said the following. Play clip one. Since you asked about that, I myself just don't tell anybody I told you this. Especially don't tell Joe Biden. I don't think that there should be any debates. I do not think that the president of the United States has comported himself in a way that anybody should, and, and has any association with truth, evidence, data, and facts. I wouldn't, I wouldn't legitimize a conversation with him, nor a debate in terms of the presidency of the United States. Now, I know that the Biden campaign thinks in a different way about this, but I just... I thought what he did in the uh, 2016 was disgraceful, stalking Hillary Clinton like that. I was disappointed that the press didn't say, go back to your station. You're not here. You don't own this stage. You, are, you have your own podium. She has hers. So I, I think that he'll probably act in a way that is beneath the dignity of the presidency. He does that every day. So there should be no debates because Why? Oh, because the president is undignified. Isn't isn't that amazing? That's supposed to be a real... And don't think that this is just Nancy Pelosi waking up from the hangover and, you know... No, she's putting this out there because she wants to see what the public response is to this. She wants to see what it is that we are being told... Um. Oh, she wants to see, rather, what it is that we, we do in reaction to what we're being told with all of this. If people say, yeah, that seems good. Oh, then, then you'll, the media, Queen Pelosi directs the media. They don't direct her. So she puts this out there. We'll see what happens. And then all of a sudden you'll start seeing think pieces. You'll start seeing the op-ed columns in the Washington Post, the New York Times, the op-ed columns writing things about how, you know, what we, we really shouldn't dignify the Trump administration by having a debate. Biden's above that. Yeah, really? He's the sitting Trump is a sitting president, folks. If he's so undignified and so terrible and such a joke and all the rest of it, uh, guess what? They should take the opportunity. They should leap at the opportunity to show that to the American people by having Joe Biden, you know, clean his clock on stage, so to speak. Yeah, I'll show him all the malarkey. And but I don't I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Remember with, with Trump and Hillary and Trump and the other Republicans? He's a, he's a fight. We haven't seen Trump in a debate in a long time. I remember Trump was very good on his feet, and he knows how to throw a punch. I, I'll never forget when Joe Biden debated Paul Ryan back in, uh, what was it now, 2008? No, sorry, 2011. 2012, no, 2012. And... It just, he just bullied him. I mean, Paul Ryan was there like, well, I have all the spreadsheets and I'm a really nice guy and 
you know, I've crunched all the numbers, and what he's saying is just not true. And Biden's like, yeah, whatever, little squirt, get out of the way. I want to just talk over you and yell. It's just not true. I'm awesome. You know, Obama, Biden, media loves us. You shut up, little, little whatever. And you know, Paul Ryan's like, well, hold on a second, but I just feel like, I feel like we should all be able to have a conversation here. I, I feel like that we need to have a conversation, and and you know, we need to have a talk about things. And this is what they're saying, folks. It's what we're being told all the time about Biden when it comes into the debates that we need to we we need to allow him to determine whether or not Trump now is at the level where he can he can d- demand a debate. It, it's absurd. It's insane. All right, everybody, what's really going on here in the Big Apple? There's a lot of conversation happening about the destruction of cities across the country under Democrat rule. We have somebody joining who is part of the state assembly running for Congress here in NYC. Maybe the only Republican congresswoman in New York City if she wins. Nicole Meliotakis is with us now. Nicole, thanks so much. Great to be with you, Buck. Thanks a lot. All right. What's going on with my city? This place is a mess. How are we going to fix it? Well, you know what? The, the, the thing is, that you, you're absolutely right. I would be the only Republican Congress member. And it is critically important to have that voice of opposition again, because, you know, for 30 years, uh, this seat was in Republican hands. It was the only voice that really pushed back against the, the, the far left. And uh, we need that more than ever with people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Bill de Blasio and my opponent, Max Rose. They, they're taking basically uh, substantial liberties with the criminal justice system and and allowing criminals to be released back onto the street they're supporting the defund of the police movement uh in the state legislature under one party rule they passed a uh an initiative that uh basically eliminates bail for serious offenses Uh, i've been that voice of reason for the last uh 10 years in the state assembly i've actually stopped the mayor on a number of issues including he wanted to bring heroin injection centers to our city wants to build a jail in my district that was not going to happen uh and of course of the bail law that took effect which is really the main issue uh that has created so much chaos on the streets of new york city where they are just took away the judge's discretion to hold people um and we were able to get that actually just fixed in the last couple of months we were able to get homicide manslaughter felony drug charges strangulation back onto the list of crimes in which a judge can use discretion which which is an improvement uh, but certainly there's so much more to do and that's why we need more republicans in this city pushing back you have flight from a lot of cities across the country but the unfortunately it seems the single uh, worst place for people leaving right now new york city i've seen estimates of over four hundred thousand have left the five boroughs do we have any sense of how many of them are coming back and also what do you think is going to happen if they don't open restaurants soon when it comes to the decision to come back yeah well you know what people are leaving in droves and that certainly is something that we've warned about uh we hope the governor and the mayor come to their senses and realize that we are losing our tax base, that this city is going to be a real economic ruin if we don't not only keep people here, the taxpayers here, but also uh, make sure that our businesses can survive here. And that that requires two things. One is law and order. Businesses want to be in safe communities. They're not going to reopen a store if they're going to get their windows smashed and be looted or their employees aren't safe. Uh, The second thing is we have to make sure that we reopen our economy. We're not doing that here in New York. You're seeing how so many jobs and and industries are returning around the country, but not here in in very liberal left-wing New York. Look, we want to be safe. There are precautions. There are guidelines, but we need to reopen as well. And I've actually joined with one of my colleagues and two local attorneys uh, Lou Gerlamino is one of them. Uh, we announced a class action lawsuit against the mayor and the governor to reopen our indoor dining here in the city uh, because that industry is, is dying and 200,000 people are out of work in that industry alone in the city of New York. And so you know, it makes no sense. We meet the metrics just like everyone else of, of the other municipalities here in the state of New York. Uh, but yet we're the only ones, New York City is the only one, that you can't have any form of indoor dining at this time. And, and so that's what that lawsuit is going to be filed shortly. And we have, we have a many, we have over 100 restaurants, uh, probably it's uh, hundreds at this point, uh, that have signed on to that class action lawsuit. And how, 
how, how do you think that's going to proceed? How long? Because, you know, time is not on the side of these establishments. We're speaking to Nicole Maliotakis, a state assemblywoman from Staten Island, running for Congress here in New York. Uh, Nicole, how, how long before you're going to get an answer on that? Because it seems to people like we're living in this de Blasio dictatorship right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But I mean, you know, this was our only course of action that was left because we've been screaming and yelling and there's been petitions and uh, we've done press conferences. We've tried to put pressure. We've written letters and there's been no, um, no, 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 no negotiation, nothing, no conversation with this governor or the mayor regarding indoor dining. And so this was the only thing we could do now is take some sort of legal action and that's what we're doing um but yeah you're right look the legal system is is a slow one it it, it will take time and we're just hoping that the uh threat of this lawsuit will hopefully get them to realize what they're doing is is terrible but it's not just that they won't allow the indoor dining it's that they are shaking down they're it's legalized extortion what they're doing they are shaking down these small businesses whether it's construction sites whether it be um, you know Department of Building Inspections, whether it be uh, the restaurants being inspected by the Health Department, by the, the Transportation Department that's uh, scrutinizing the way they have the tables set outside or what kind of tent they're using, they are getting harassed by the city, by the state, uh, and that's what we've been also pushing back on. And uh, it seems that they're looking, instead of making these businesses survive and prosperous and gain their revenue based on the taxes that they pay, uh, they want to instead just shake them down and extort them for for money to fill the city and state government coffers. Well, let's let's get into that a little bit. How big is the shortfall going to be by the end of this year? And what is the you know Democrats uh, in the in the uh, city council and and also de Blasio administration plan for this? What are they going to do? Well, look, the city and state are losing billions by the month. I mean, it's the longer that they don't, you know, work to reopen this economy and, and restore law and order. Most importantly, to keep these, you got to keep these businesses here. You got to keep the residents that are here, the taxpayers here. Um, I think that that is a warning that we've been. That's an alarm we've been sounding for months now. And um, you know, they're they're you know. You, the money does not grow on trees. I mean, if we, if we lose these individuals who are a really important part of our uh, our society here in New York City and state, we are going to be in trouble. And, uh, you know, you get concerned about this mayor, the way he spends money. Uh, he, this is somebody who took a $70 billion budget under Mayor Bloomberg and has made it a $96 billion budget. And he only started cutting back a little bit this year because he had no choice. Uh, but you see the way he spends money. A billion, two billion on uh, his, his, his wife's Thrive NYC program, which has been a disaster. He lost a billion dollars in the um, renewal schools program, which, which was, you know, these contracts with high priced consultants and the waste that goes on at the Department of Education. Uh, you know, they're, they're, he, he's not someone in any, by any means who is a good guardian of taxpayer money. And so the more he wastes money and the more he drives out people who pay taxes, we're really going to be in dire streets. And that, and that's sort of like what, where we are at this point. And I, I, we're hoping that, you know, some city wakes up. <laughs> we're speaking to Nicole Maliotakis, New York State Assembly member and candidate for uh, U.S. House Representatives 11th District. Um, Nicole, before we let you go, I, I just want to know if you're are you hearing from Democrats in in your district that, you know, en- enough is enough. And, and maybe even if they don't agree with you on everything, but this is my hope as a, as a New Yorker, at least. And I'm, and I'm like this to be the case across the country in cities that are going through similar things to what New York is going through right now. Are you hearing from Democrats who will say that they're willing to work with you or, or, or they're willing to join you in shoring up the budgetary issue uh, in a responsible way and law and order on the streets. I mean, that should be a bipartisan area. Uh, And even this week, you have Democrats like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden starting to move in that direction. Are some Democrats coming out to you that are willing to have that conversation? You know, from the government perspective, unfortunately, it doesn't seem that they are serious about, you know, they're looking at uh, increasing taxes. They continue to push these radical a left-wing type agendas relating to crime. Um, it doesn't seem like they're looking to work to actually put New York in order. I get the people, though, the Democratic individuals who live in this district, they do come up to me and they say they have had enough of this party. They feel that the Democratic Party has gone way to the left and have left them, and they are joining me in my campaign. Uh, we picked up the Police Benevolent Association, which represents 50,000 members of the NYPD this week. 
Uh, I picked up the support of, of Rudy Giuliani last week. President Trump has come out and personally talked about this district and how my opponent needs to go. Uh, we can win back this seat. Uh, and, and, and this would be New York City's only voice once again. Again, 30 years, we lost it in 2018. We can win it back. And we are seeing Democrats, independents, Republicans, people from across the political spectrum join us in this campaign because they do see the need, the importance of having at least one Republican who's going to be presenting an alternative viewpoint in this city and pushing back on some of these real radical proposals that we've seen so far. And I, you know, everyone who's listening that wants to help, Nicole4NY.com, you know, there's tons of ways to get involved. So visit my website, and let's just make sure that New York City does have at least one common-sense voice in Washington. Nicole Melagatakis, she's uh, running for the 11th District here in New York for Congress, and she's a state assembly member. Nicole, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Hey, great to be with you. Thank you. So... Look, there, there are there are only so many so many people that will go along with Democrats ruining a city as they're doing here in New York. And they really are ruining it. I mean, I know there's debates about this, but there's only so many people that will go through this and deal with this before they realize that they, they've got to switch up the approach. So I, I view New York. I know for a lot of you, uh, uh, you know, there's you're, you're not in the city, but I view New York as the laboratory, in a sense, for, for what Democrats completely unchecked can do to a place that had been functioning pretty well because it has, it's just like California. There's so much that New York has that is to its benefit that's sort of baked into it, right? We've got incredible history, location, geography of this place, the infrastructure that's already here, the history of it as a financial hub, and all these things, incredibly important, powerful stuff. And if you have the wrong leadership, if you have radical left Democrats in charge, they can find a way to ruin it. And that's what they're doing. The same way that California, people forget, was a Republican state in national elections uh, during the Reagan years. And I I think George H.W. Bush actually might have even won California. It, It used to be a pretty reliably red state. And through illegal immigration and far left wing policy and high taxation, it has become a radical left enclave and everyone now suffers. And, and it's now my friends out there have the same complaints that you have here in New York, where there's, you know, the streets are a mess and the vagrants are not only all over the place, but they're increasingly aggressive and desperate. And there's there's uh, violence that happens involving the, that, that they commit. These are things that we're all seeing happen. And I just I know that right now they're they're going to be feverishly trying to come up with ways in the live media to make it make it seem like that's not the truth. It is the truth. What's happening in New York is a canary in the coal mine for the rest of the country. And it's time to get things under control here. It's time for Roll Call. Facebook.com slash Buck Sexton. Team Buck at iHeartMedia.com. So that's all the stuff we need there. Uh, Producer Mark, I assume you're not going to boycott Major League Baseball even though they're walking off the field, right? Yeah, no, I'm never going to boycott any sports. It's in my blood. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, So but where, where are they now in the baseball season? I think technically like around halfway through the trade deadlines on Monday, but some teams haven't played as many games as the others because of COVID outbreaks. It is it is a catastrophe, 60-game uh, okay. season. Uh, have, they, uh, have the ratings, the, the TV ratings, been way down because it's just less exciting without a crowd, or do people not really care? Uh, I haven't seen any articles that the ratings are way down. Obviously, they're a little down just be, like, because – well, one, you've got the NBA, NHL, and MLB playing all at the same time, which is obviously different. So you're taking away from the normal August baseball audience because you've got the playoffs of those two other sports going, and then obviously the playoff ratings wouldn't be as high as they would be in the middle of the winter. So uh, I think the ratings talk is a little... Uh, it's, not as, it's not the normal ratings. You have to look at it with you know, COVID eyes, if you will. Fair enough. Well... There you have. What's what are your plans for the weekend? Anything exciting? I got a fantasy football draft. So that's fun. Okay, that's good. Who's going to be? Or can you not tell us? Does that give away your strategy? Who will be your number one pick? Uh, well, I don't have the number one overall pick. 
Uh, so it's really, it depends on the, in this draft, it depends on the nine people ahead of me because I won the league last year. But they don't listen to the show, so you could tell me who, who's going to be your, who's going to be the person you try to get first? Uh, I guess Nick Chubb at that position, but uh, it's kind of hard to say. Huh. You don't even know who that is. I don't. Who is that? He played, he's the running back for the Browns. Hmm. Interesting. Learn something new every day. David writes in, Buck, I never miss an episode of your show. It's often the highlight of my day. Well, thank you so much, David. That's really high praise. Even with the bad news, my reaction to your show is usually similar to the one I have after watching a Trump rally. You never leave to fail me in, uh, you never leave, sorry, you never fail to leave me inspired and with an upbeat smile on my face. Uh, Producer Mark is doing a super fine job as well. He does, however, remind me a little bit of Carlton the doorman for some reason. Who's that? Do we know who Carlton the doorman is? Carlton the doorman? No. I have no no idea. I'm I'm, I'm assuming this is like a a mythological grouchy creature of some kind. It's definitely not Carlton from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. No, you do not remind anybody of that Carlton. Although I can dance like him for those who are curious. I would love to see that. Yeah. Shield time, my friend David writes. Henceforth, I'm making it my mission to pass the buck. You and Tucker are the best. Don't ever stop. You're definitely raising a few IQs and making a palpable difference. Give them hell. David, that is very, very kind. Your note has made my day. Means a lot. Thank you so much. Um, so, yes, really, really appreciate that. Okay. Um, next up here, we have uh, Andrew writes... Hello, super radio host and producer. My company just gave us an email with the following ridiculousness. Apparently, we're in second grade again. All employees will receive a sticker from their manager supervisor that is to be placed on the back of their employee ID badge. Employees can simply show this sticker on their ID badge to a coworker that is not wearing their mask properly, so they take a moment to fix the situation in a friendly, non-confrontational manner. <laughs> Uh, is this a thing that people do? Mark, did I miss this in preschool? I, I guess so. I mean, I guess they're trying to stop confrontation in the workplace. I don't know. I guess if somebody showed me a little sign that said wear a mask, um, I would laugh and then I would mock them. So it does do that. Yeah, at least it makes you happy instead of angry. Yeah. But then again, I mean, if it's an office that requires masks to be there, I mean, technically that's the mandate. I mean, there's there's complying with the mandate because you have no choice. And then there's the recognition that this is stupid. Um, But that's what it is. So that's where I am on it. Hey, you know, I could I could be wrong. Just remember, all we have to do is wear masks. It'll all go away, except we've all been wearing masks for months and months and it didn't just go away. So there is that there is that you can pay attention to that or you can think that I don't know what. Mike, how's it going, Buck? Michael here from Fairbanks, Alaska. Ooh, sounds cold. Just started listening to you about five months ago on News Radio 970 KFBX Fairbanks. Now I listen to your podcast on Spotify, so I don't miss a show. Mike, I love it. Thank you. Continue to please listen on Spotify and pass the buck to other friends in Alaska. We love our Team Buck Alaska folks. They're a rugged, individualistic, patriotic bunch that know how to debone a salmon and scare off a grizzly bear. Mike writes, I'm writing in today because I'm being canceled. Oh, God, this is a serious email. I'm sorry. I'm being canceled by my own wife of nine years, believe it or not. I'm a Hispanic currently serving in the Army uh, for 11 years. Wife is white and a stay-at-home mom with three kids and one on the way. She's a hardened Trump basher. She thinks the president is an incompetent fool, a racist, and a disbeliever in science when it comes to mask wearing. Well, apparently I am, too. There's no changing her mind on any of that. It's very sad that I can't be as, as, as outspoken as I want to be in my own home about my political views. I can't tell her outright that I love and support Trump for everything he's done for our country. She has threatened divorce if I were to say anything positive about him or any Republican. A part of me wishes... She, oh, gosh. Um, the one thing keeps me around are my kids. I can't be without them. I can't raise my shield high in my home. Please keep yours high for me. Man, Mike. Yeah, shield's high for you, buddy. That's tough. I'm so sorry about that. That's not an easy situation on the on the home front. But I, look, I don't believe that people should allow their politics to uh, to corrode and and degrade their personal relationships. It's just it's just not worth it, man. The, the the people around you that's your life. That's your that's what you're dealing with every day. Uh, it's just so sad. It's so sad. I I can't imagine taking that perspective. 
I can handle even the looniest lib as long as they're respectful, nice, and you know, willing to shut the blank up about their politics when they're you know around me, and that's fine. And I'll do the same, by the way. I, I, it's not a one-way street. You know, we can, I can be around anybody and not talk politics with them and get along just fine. But I, I always do find it uh, pretty, pretty amazing when people find out what I do in a social setting. And I usually tell them something like, I work in media. That's my, if I don't know where I am and who I'm dealing with, I'll just say, yeah, I work in the media. And they'll say, uh, you know, I, I do voiceovers for this guy, producer Mark, who's uh, lighting, up the, uh, lighting up the charts, you know. That's, I said something like that, you know what I mean? So, Why do you have to drag me into it? I don't know. I figure maybe then they'll like me. So, you know, I just say it. I, I try to come up with something that's very non-confrontational, but they keep pushing. And then they find out what I do. There is this tendency, and only, of course only the libs will do this to me, to they'll they'll hear they'll find out that I work in talk radio as in I host a nationally syndicated talk radio show on I think over 180 stations now and they'll say something like well have you ever thought of and then they launch into something and I'm always like yes that talking point that sounds like it comes out of a DNC press release yes I have thought of that and yes I have heard of it's always if it's like oh wait buck I'm gonna I'm going to blow your mind with this one thing. You know, I, uh, I work in an office doing something that has nothing to do with politics, and you do this all day long, but I, I'm, I just met you, and within 30 seconds of meeting you, I'm going to totally shatter your sense of, of politics by dropping this bomb. People do this all. I can't, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. It's kind of the version that of, uh, well... I remember when I was in the CIA and if, when people found, and it was the same thing. I'd say, I work for the government. You know, I'm an analyst. I, you know, I just do government stuff. I work in foreign policy for the government, whatever. But they eventually pushed me or they figured out, you know, CIA. So I wasn't really allowed to lie about it. Uh, that was another thing. I was, a, I was an overt employee. So I wasn't supposed to make up stories. Uh, anyway, but people would always say, oh, you work for the CIA? Do you know, and they'd say somebody, and I was like, no, look, uh, there are always two things. One, the CIA is very big, and two, we don't talk about who else works at the CIA, ever, ever. <laughs> so there was a, bro, do you know blah 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 No, I do not know blah 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 And if I did, I would still say, no, I do not know blah 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 So hopefully there's nobody who works there named blah 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 no, You I, mean I don't you don't we... just go to bars and tell people CIA secrets? That's not how it works? Nah, it's a bad idea if you want to stay yeah, out of federal prison. So. Yeah, no, I know. That's the thing. So, but if you want, you know, three hots and a cot inside of a prison cell, then, then sure, go for it. Um, anyway, Michael, I'm sorry to get, get off uh, away from your, your message here, but I, I just thought uh, worth saying to you that um, just stay in it, man. You know, focus on that relationship. Focus on those kids. And this, let the Freedom Hut be your outlet. You can always tune into us. You've always got friends here. The truth can be here. You and the wife, you focus on being good to each other, supporting each other, and taking care of those kids. Leave, just leave the politics out of it. You don't have to get into it. Uh, Michelle. Although I will say I'm not married because I've dated too many, I dated too many liberals in my life, and I didn't realize what a problem that was until recently. Um, that's probably one of the biggest, probably, probably, I'd say, maybe probably, totally, uh, one of the biggest, single mistakes that I made in my personal life. I mean, not a big mistake in that I didn't get married and then have to get divorced from a person because of their politics. Uh, but it is a, it, that has been a challenge for me that I didn't, I always thought, oh, well, you can get around that. Maybe 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, you could, but these days everyone is so immersed in this all the time. And I do think that social media creates this kind of endless feedback loop of politics. So, Yeah. You know, no one's able to escape it. You know, you think you're, I'm on TikTok and I'm trying to, this happens sometimes. Oh, I just said I'm on TikTok, didn't I? I'm not supposed to be on TikTok. You they're, did. They're like selling it to an American company in a couple of days. I don't know. Look, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. The Chinese already know all about me. They already stole my OPM file. So I, what else are they going to figure out? I'm not that concerned about it. But I know I'm supposed to be, I would be concerned about it for strategic reasons. But as an individual, I don't know, I'm not really that worried about it. But don't don't follow my behavior on this. Some of you are going to get very annoyed at me. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, no, I was going to say on TikTok. Sometimes I just want to look at there's these guys that do these great cooking red meat videos, and I love those. These cooking red meat videos. 
And and then all of a sudden it'll go to someone who's doing a little dance. And at the end, it's like, and I hate Trump. And you're like, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see your anti-Trump stupidity. I didn't come here for this. You know, I don't know how the algorithm. I think it's gotten better because as I swipe more and more, you know, you have less of that. But in the beginning, at least the algorithms will show what other people are all seeing because they're all saying, yeah, it's great. I'm telling you, TikTok's pretty addictive when they start using it. You sit there, you just burn through time. You know what else is pretty addictive? Playing God of War on PlayStation 4. I'm almost 40. I got to stop, but I don't know. It's fun. Can't help it. It's a nice, a nice escape. It's not like it used to be, Buck, that if you're 40 and playing video games, it's, a, it's looked down upon. Think I, about it. We've been growing up playing video games our entire lives. They're not just for kids anymore. No, I mean, the God of War video, it's like a movie where you're, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure cinema. It's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Plus, when I when I play Call of Duty, I like to sneak up behind people and hit them with the butt of my rifle and then yell into my headset. That's right, noob. So stuff like Please that. Please tell me you don't actually do that. <laughs> no, but people do it to me. And I want to do it back to them because they do it to me. I was like, I'm not a noob. How dare you, sir? How dare you calleth me a noob in the Call of Duty? But, yeah. Just imagining you. Getting screamed at and bullied by like twelve year olds. Oh, it happens. <laughs> it happens all the time. They're like, "Yeah, take that! I just stabbed you. You couldn't even shoot me because I stabbed you." And I'm like, "They're like, yeah, noob, take that." I'm always like, "Oh," and they say much worse stuff than just take that too. But I, but I don't have the headset to talk back to them, and I can just tell these kids are like fourteen. Oh man. Anyway, yeah, that happens for sure. They bully me. They're bullying me on Call of Duty. Patrick Buck, after watching Trump's nomination speech, I feel like he shifted the Republican Party into the Libertarian Party without the Republicans knowing. Taking on big business, defending the Constitution, protecting constitutional rights while accepting gay rights. He has presented himself as the perfect candidate that I never thought he would become. I didn't vote for Trump in 2016, but you can bet your swoop. That's very valuable that I'm voting for four more years of Trump, four years of American triumph. Four more years of being proud to live in the greatest and most successful experiment of natural rights ever attempted on this earth. Well, Patrick, I'm so glad the Trumpster's coming through for you, man. Thank you. I'm happy to hear it. All right. More roll call. Before we get into it, though, remember, I'm going to be uh, out. I'm going to be visiting the great American West next weekend. So I'm going to be in, I'm actually be in Montana. I can tell you that I'll be in Montana for a couple of days off the quarantine list. Yay. So I can come back to New York and not being my quarantine ends today or tomorrow, I guess, technically or something like that. But anyway, uh, but you have yeah, to I'm go back be... on the quarantine list afterwards. I'm sorry. What? You have to go back on the list. After no, because Montana is off the list. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Montana is off the list. So I'm good. South Carolina. I mean, uh, North Carolina is still on the list. So I can go there and not have to quarantine. Not that I had to quarantine. The whole thing is ridiculous. It's preposterous. No one's quarantining. It's a joke. But anyway, uh, but yes, yeah, so I'll be out next Thursday and Friday. I'm going to miss you all very much. So make sure you turn in, uh, tune in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that you pass the buck in the meantime. And then after that, that's I'm taking a long weekend for Memorial Day. I'm, I just said Memorial Day. Labor Day. I'm taking a long weekend for Labor Day. And then uh, Mark and I are going to be in the political matrix until the election nonstop. There will be no days off. There will be no, there'll be nothing, neither rain nor snow, nor, nor, I don't know, whatever will keep us from our appointed rounds of spreading that freedom. And then we'll just take off from Thanksgiving on. Yeah, we're going to take some time off. We'll come back eventually. But we're going to be totally locked and loaded with you guys until the election. And it's going to be quite a time on this show. Make sure you pass the buck. People that care about politics should be listening to this show. Spotify is super easy for any of you who use that. Uh, also, the iHeart app, our employer, very, very good app, good app. And uh, what's the other? Oh, Apple Podcast. That's the other one. Just type in Buck Sexton. The show pops up. Boom. You listen anytime you want. It's fantastic. Michelle, why did President Trump give a lengthy acceptance speech last night? Because he can. A stark contrast to Biden's short and awkward speech. I can't wait for the debates. Um, Michelle, I hear what you're saying. I appreciate it. I do wish the speech as somebody who was supporting Trump and thought the RNC overall was a huge success. A plus. Uh, I. I felt like it could have been a little shorter, but anyway, it was great. 
Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Honored to have a chance to talk to you today. We'll, we'll speak on Monday. Relax, chillax, enjoy yourselves the next few days. Shields high.